Hello sports fans, tonight we're going to have an unboxing of the venerable Panzer III tank that was one of the stalwarts of the German army all through World War II. It was first designed in 1937 and they had three or four prototypes and I think the model we deducted here didn't we agree we think it's a, a Model E by looking at all the pictures of them? Mm -hmm. We're going to do a quick unboxing of it, and while we're doing that, Adam is going to fill us in on some pertinent details of the Panzer tank. Yeah, so the Panzer III uh, was developed um, in, uh, first uh, thought of to be designed in, I believe it was 1934, uh, but we go on. Um, to enter competition uh, for the design in 36. Um, there were four companies uh, that uh, entered the competition. There was Daimler-Benz, which is one company, Krupp, uh, MAN, and Rheinmetall. All of them produced prototypes um, and the testing took place between 36 and 37, and eventually the contract would go to Daimler Benz. Um, and they would go through a number of uh, prototypes. Um, as we mentioned before, E is the one we believe we have. A through D uh, were all prototype versions. Um, uh, a actually did see some combat. Um, as a prototype, but the rest of them uh, weren't produced, um, and it wasn't until the E that we get mass production of the Panzer III. Well, they built a lot of Panzer III's now, and like I said, there's a lot of different variations of them, but the total production of the Panzer III was somewhere around 5,774 Panzer III's. And they built them basically between 1939. Here's our cute little Panzer III. Now, I I like Panzer III. They, they, they weighed about between, the first ones weighed around 18 tons. And I think the final productions were pushing 20, is what I understand. They were used almost on every battlefield in World War II. They were almost exclusively used by General Rummel in his famous Panzer Corps in Africa. They were very utilitarian. And what's another interesting fact is that our beloved Stug 3s, Adam, were built off this Panzer III chassis. That's right. Yeah, they had a V12 Maybach engine in them that produced 296 horsepower, and they could go up just almost nearly 35 miles an hour, or they had a range of over 150 miles. And they were pretty reliable in comparison to the other German tanks that they built. Mm -hmm. uh, they were re a reliable tank as far as they didn't have a lot of mechanical problems with them because this is one of the few cases where the Germans sized their equipment, their engines and their transmissions and all that to match how much weight that they were trying to yeah. push. Yeah, so the um, Panzer III, um, as Doug said, was very effective against um, the Allied forces in the West um, and in uh, North Africa. Um, it was able to combat the uh, U.S.'s M3 Stewarts as well as the Lees um, and uh, the British Crusaders. So it was really good against those, um, but it ran into some trouble, as with all German tanks ran into some trouble when they tried to invade Russia. With the and operate, Operation Barbarossa. These first tanks all have five man crews on them, and they were really tight in there. They had the commander, the gunner, the driver, the loader, and the communications guy. The communications person also doubled as helped with the loading. Okay, I found out something else new today. What'd you find out? The Panzer threes and Panzer fours were maybe were concurrently. I always thought that the Panzer IV superseded the Panzer III as a the main battle tank. As a main battle tank, 
But what it was is that Donner Benz built the Panzer Threes, Panzers, Panzer Threes, and Crump got the contract to build the Panzer Fours. That's right. And there wasn't a lot of difference in the Panzer Fours except for what we found out was this is what they said, and maybe show it somehow. The Panzer Fours were a little bit taller, but it doesn't show it in this way, that way, that way. But the Panzer Threes were a little bit, just a hair smaller. They were only five tons lighter. They had the same Maybach V1200, 300, 296 horsepower engine in them. And the Panzer Three were more maneuverable. Less armored. Less armored. And the Panzer IV, yes, thank you. The Panzer IV had more armor on it. They weren't quite as maneuverable. And so, but they built more Panzer IVs than they did Panzer Threes. But when you consider that they built the Stug Threes off of the Panzer III chassis, they built 5,700 and some odd Panzer Threes, and they built 10,000 300, somewhere around there, of the Stugs. This Panzer III chassis was the most widely used chassis mm -hmm. of all the German tanks, but the Panzer IV was, as far as a full-functioning turret tank, built 8,500. We'll talk about Panzer IVs and numbers another night because there was a whole bunch of fun derivatives that they made off of the Panzer Four too, but they did build the Panzer Fours all the way through 1945, mm -hmm. where they they built the Panzer Threes through 1943, but they continued building the Stug Threes through 1945, right. and they kind of rolled over the their factories to to put out the Stugs Threes rather than the full uh, Panzer Threes. Right. Yeah, and one of the interesting things um, is the the function uh, of the, the original design of the function of the Panzer III was to fight other tanks. It was a main battle tank. Um, it was supposed to fight other tanks, and it did fight other tanks when it came to the al the Western Allies. But uh, once they ran into those those dastardly T-34s and KV-1s, um, it couldn't hold up. And the Panzer IV was originally designed uh, to hit soft targets. Um, uh, meaning your humans, meaning humans, or uh, artillery uh, that wasn't enclosed, or non-tank uh, targets. Um, well, the Panzer IV, being bigger, um, was able to be up armored and up gunned um, faster than and easier than the Panzer III was, and so they switched roles. The Panzer III. Uh, would have its gun changed out to a... 75 uh, millimeter cannon. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Panzer IV would get uh, the upgraded 75 millimeter cannon. The Panzer III uh, would have its cannon shortened uh, for those more um, soft target um, infantry support roles. Um, and then it would largely phase out in 1943, whereas the Panzer IV, because it was able to be upgunned and up armored, would last... To the end of the war. One thing I heard too is on the Panzer IV, and they do make a Panzer IV with a with a large long barrel on it, but the shorter barrel on the Panzer IV was so they could also get in forests and be able to rotate their turrets mm -hmm. in heavily wooded areas uh, where the longer ones. And they found out and that the these poor old T-34s, look how much bigger these T-34s are. Once again, like we've shown when we showed the T-30, the 38T the other day, just how much more capable the T-34 was. The T-34 was uh, the kind of the rock star in the first part of the wars. Now, Hitler had to change his whole game plan when they finally saw a T-34. That being the case, they noticed that in heavily wooded areas, sometimes the T-34 would hit a hard target or a, a tree, not a hard target, but a tree, and get stopped. And then so they made, that's another reason why they put the 75 millimeter short barrel, because they didn't need the distance in the heavily wooded areas sure. that you'd need, like in a, if you're out in an open mm -hmm. field or the steps or something like that. So anyway, 
Once again, our T-34 makes an appearance as kind of the bad guy that the Germans are always chasing. Yep. That and the, the uh, KV-1. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I was putting that away. If you wanted to see what a KV-1 looks like, we do have at least one video of a KV-1 driving around um, in the RC version, if you wanted to see that driving around and what that looks like. This is, I'm embarrassed to show this one. Because this is not a good tank. That's a really crappy piece of crap. But it's in right scale. And you can see how the the T-34, I mean the Panzer III, stacks up against the M4 Sherman. Mm -hmm. And the Sh Sherman is a, it could take on a, the Panzers, uh, the threes and the fours. Uh, quite adequately. It wasn't until they got into the pa Panthers and the bigger ones where they'd run into some trouble. The Panzer tank was used all over. It it was a, an effective tank, and it was a, a tank that um, uh, held up to a lot of uh, abuse and was a pretty solid tank as far as uh, mechanics. They built them. They uh, continually improved them why they manufactured them, but uh, you can't hardly think about World War II and the German army without thinking about the Panzer tank. Subscribe, damn it. Bye. You know, the other day, I was referred to as being clinically stupid, and I think they're right. <laughs> Don't you think I'm clinically stupid, Adam? No. I'm 70 years old and I still work full time. I'm a mechanical engineer and, and my wife agreed 100%. I told him this guy named Nameless said, I was clinically stupid. And my wife says, well, everybody knows that. And I says, okay, good. So I'm not gonna worry about it. <laughs>